And then for the guys, uh, any name that's like Michael B. Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> I can see Bill being like, all right, okay. <laughs> this is an honest question I ask myself when I'm, when I'm dating guys is like, is he looking for a relationship or is he just looking for someone to talk to to fill his time? So I would step one, talk to him, and then step two, even with your answer, to be kind of careful and observant and just always communicating with him along the way. Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Dear ABG, where we answer your listeners' submitted questions. If you don't know us, we are ABG, um, Asian Boss Girl, a podcast for the modern day Asian American woman. My name is Mel. I'm Helen. And I'm Janet. So before we get into the listener submitted questions, we have a fun question to start us off. So ladies, what is the sexiest name? The sexiest name, okay. I have a couple that, uh, for, for girl, mm. I would say a name like a Chanel or a Rihanna or even like a Natalia. Uh, uh, yeah, there's yeah. something about, I think uh, if a name like rolls off your tongue, it's very pretty. Oh, mm. rolls off your tongue. Yeah. <laughs> even like if, if someone says like Jeanette. Oh, or like, Jeanette, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Or like yeah. Melody, yeah. you know? <laughs> like, oh, <laughs> that don't sound good. No, but like Helen. <laughs> there's like no role there. And then for the guys, uh, any name that's like Michael B. Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> I can see Bill being like, all right, okay. <laughs> yeah. I think other names though that I think are hard, like Aiden is pretty well, hot Aiden's name. A pretty hot. Although I will say that lately I was thinking about how the name Justin, I know there are a lot of Justins out there because it's a it's a good basic, mm -hmm. but there's like Justin Timberlake, Justin mm -hmm. Bieber, our friend Justin Rod, like amazingly talented, good singers and dancers. And I was like, Justins are in my mind, just like talented people and talent is hot. I think these are good names to note when Helen has a baby that we know. Rihanna Wang. Whoa. 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 Justin Wang? I mean, I feel like I know I think what, I know what I know Justin Wang is. <laughs> uh, for girls, I was thinking Nicole. Mm. Because also you could do the nickname, which is Nikki. Mm. Yeah. And I feel like Nikki has a, a nice little ring to it. A nice little like stripper name. <laughs> <laughs> Very sassy, you know? Um, I also think Victoria. Victoria oh, yeah. is like a really nice, uh, maybe because I think Victoria Beckham and I think she oh, has like true. a very nice like classy sexiness to her. Yeah. Uh, for guys, the name Blake. I don't know why like the B mm. and then the lake, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> so for my female names or girl names, I like the name, it's similar to you, I like Janelle or Janella. Yeah. Something just like, something she sounds like sexy, confident, she's hot, she's sophisticated. For a man, I've always liked the name Jeff. Like, oh, yeah. Jeff is oh. a good name. Jeff, Jeff is just like, I would date a Jeff, you know? Like, yeah. It sounds hot. Like, yeah. mm -hmm. I feel like Jeff is also like a Justin, like a good basic. Mm. Yeah, but I feel like Jeff like sweep you off your foot, like her feet or whatever it's called. <laughs> just one foot. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> <I'm only one>. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so our first listener submitted question is from Christina. She's from Chicago. Mm. And her question is Have you guys had professional mentors growing up and how did you find them? Being at the start of my career journey, I've realized that although I have a great support system, I lack a solid mentor figure that can help guide me throughout my career. Mm. I've been on LinkedIn for quite some time and even found someone from Subtle Asian Networking, but I'd love more tips and insights on how I can approach this topic with more confidence and direction. Love you guys. I think this is a popular topic in like general like career development stuff. Mm. And I feel like it's one of those where it's like you should have a mentor almost everyone should pursue mm. that. I personally like never actually had like a formal mentor. Mm. I think in um, in a couple of my jobs they will assign you like a counselor, right? Mm. But that's kind of different from someone who is not necessarily tied to a specific job um, and maybe is working at a different company, but is in your industry because then they can see you throughout the trajectory in case you change companies mm. or different things like that, right? Mm. Um, so I never really had a formal person, but I did happen upon uh, more recently in UX design um, when I started back in like 2015. I feel like I was just really lucky that the first job I landed, um, one of the two lead UX people I just really jived with, mm -hmm. and she ended up bringing me over to a company that was like my third UX job, and I worked under her. Mm -hmm. And it was never like a formal, I guess she was then my direct boss, that was someone mm -hmm. I reported to, but it just, there was like a natural fit, like we kind of had a similarity in the way that we thought, and I think she saw something in me that could be developed. 
Um, so I felt like I kind of sought out, um, or I didn't seek out a mentor, and the mentor almost like kind of sought me out. Mm. I guess my suggestion would be just to remain open because sometimes um, maybe when you're actively trying to seek someone, you might not find them, but be open to who might be coming to you and wanting to work with you. Um, the second thing I will say is that I think a lot of people think of mentors as needing to be someone who's a lot more senior than you. Um, and I think I read somewhere recently where you can actually get a lot of valuable information from people who are either your peers and maybe just working in a slightly different industry or people who are just a couple years above you. They might have actually more relevant, updated and applicable tips um, for you. So maybe that's something to think about as well. Um, for me, I'm similar to Jan. I think growing up, I actually never had a men like a formal mentor either. Um, you know, maybe it's because like when I was in college or in high school, like social media wasn't really a big thing. So I had no one to kind of like be like, oh, I want to do that. And I, I know who to ask for those type of questions. Um, it was still uh, an establishing industry. And so I didn't have someone I could go to. I think naturally though, for me, I found people that I looked up to in terms of role models that weren't necessarily in my job, but I liked the way they carried themselves and how they handled you know, networking and, you know, applying to jobs. So I would go to them and most of these people were my friends who were older than me. Mm -hmm. So I just be connected with them and they really helped me. But in terms of this question, it kind of makes me think about Michelle Obama's podcast. Um, she has an episode about mentorship mm -hmm. and she said this thing and it made me think about, she was like, you know, I think a lot of people who are looking for mentors um, tend to um, say or tend to think things about what this person can do for me but a mentorship is also a relationship where you also need to think about what can you do for this other person so I think as you're looking for your mentor think about you know how can you be a, like a pivotal part or somewhat helpful for this person as well as you're looking for a mentor no that is that is all great advice um, and I think in an ideal world you have three types of people to mm -hmm. sort of support you. You have an advisor, which is what Janet had mentioned earlier. This is someone who's more of like a pre-assigned person when you step into, uh, whether it's in college or at a new job, you have like a counselor and an advisor. And usually they will help you through specific situations, but they might not have that personal connection with you. And then you can have a mentor, which is what uh, Christina, you had mentioned here. And a mentor is someone who is a little bit more invested in you. And I agree, I think a mentor should be a, a, a two-way relationship, where it's like mentor-mentee. What can you also help them with and likewise them to you? Um, and they are someone who's going to challenge you and really care about the trajectory of your career, your life and everything. And then you have a sponsor. And a sponsor is someone who is in a position of power. They are someone that can likely introduce you to people and get your foot in the door. So those are sort of like the three types of people that I learned about mm -hmm. when I was uh, during my career. And I will say that it's extremely hard and it feels awkward to try and like find a mentor. Mm -hmm. Like you don't go up to someone and you're like, can you be my mentor? And yeah. honestly, I've heard people say that before and it's just like awkward. Because mm -hmm. if they don't know you, they haven't established a relationship with you, they're gonna be like, uh, I said, sure, let's like grab coffee first and then yeah. see where it yeah. goes, you know? But for me, I had like a pseudo mentor when I was at EY and he was someone that had come up to me after a pan Asian professional networking event and I did a presentation and he came up and said, hey, great job, like I'm in advisory, like that was amazing, blah, blah, blah. Would love to get coffee with you sometimes. And um, and once I started, I started to nurture that relationship after a couple of like coffees and, and lunches and things like that. And he became someone that was like super pivotal to my career when I was going through some like really down times. I went to him because he is someone that is older and that has seen a lot of like ins and outs of the company and knew exactly what I was going through. So he was something, someone that when I felt like I couldn't really trust my own advisor, I could trust him. So that was my like mentor person. But I will say that I, I also wish I kind of had a, and I talked to Mel about this recently, mm -hmm like an Asian female mentor mm -hmm. that was that is an entrepreneur and that is going to challenge me. I don't think I have that. Mm -hmm. So it is a difficult thing, I think, to find in your life. And the fact that you are on Subtle Asian Networking and LinkedIn and trying to like push yourself, put yourself out there and find these people is very commendable. And honestly, I'm gonna take a tip from that and, and maybe do that too. But mm -hmm. I think it's very important to have someone who's always gonna be challenging you and who you can also look up to. And our last question comes in the form of a voicemail, so we're going to play it now. Hi, so my last relationship ended two and a half years ago, and I took the time to really grow as a person. But now there's this guy I met at college who I feel really compatible with. We have similar interests, and it just really flows naturally between us. Um, but the thing is, he just got out of a three-year relationship a couple months ago, so I don't know how to approach it, especially since we're on summer vacation, but we do still message each other on Snapchat. Um, so what should I do, especially since I don't know how he feels about his next thing? 
Hmm. Um, I think it really depends on the person. So I actually had this conversation with my younger cousin who's 22. Where they were talking about how long it takes for someone to get over someone, and I was like, oh, for me, like I need at least like at least six to a year makes sense for me to like same. But and he was like, what are you talking about? He's like, one to three months is totally fine. I was like, what? Really? So I think maybe it depends on the person. Um, for this situation, I would ask yourself two questions. One. Um, do you think he's ready for a relationship again? Because, you know, a three-year relationship is a long time. Do you think he wants to jump back into another one? And two, yeah, this is an honest question I ask myself when I'm, when I'm dating guys is like, is he looking for a relationship or is he just looking for someone to talk to to fill his time? Because I think when people process a relationship, sometimes they like to like date around to kind of get their mind off things and not take things too seriously. Um, Almost like a rebound kind of. Kind yeah. of, it's just like this non-committal phase and I mean, I don't, I don't know this guy. I don't know how you guys, you know, are communicating. Is it really? Is a lot of chemistry? Is it like magical feelings? But I also would say though, like to be realistic, is you guys are kind of talking on Snapchat. But I think if he was really interested, he would ask for your number, you know, and moved it to a different form of medium where you guys can talk more frequently. So I think with that, just kind of take that into consideration. Um, but just see how it goes. Um, I would say that this question is very relevant for me, and it's like. You're, I mean, but you're basically talking about baggage, right? And not the good kind, not like the <laughs> nice, you know, <laughs> Chanel baggage. It's like a heavy, like emotional baggage. But um, I would say that if you both are interested in each other, to have the conversation with him and just be like, yo, where's your mindset at? Like, mm. are you still into your ex? Did it end Did it end on bad terms? Because I feel like whenever, it, if it did end on bad terms, then maybe, you know, there is more of like a reboundy situation mm. going on rather than a more genuine situation going on. So know where his mind is. Mm. And if he is like, oh yeah, I'm still like, you know, struggling with that relationship, but I'm ready to move on to you. I would say give him his space because mm -hmm. if you if you don't, you're gonna get dragged into the toxicity of that relationship, mm -hmm. and not only that, but it's also, also gonna affect your own mental health. Mm -hmm. Of am I enough? Why am I constantly feeling like I'm being compared to this person? Like, what is this relationship? DTR. Why isn't he defining it faster? Um, and I think a lot of times you just need to give that person space to heal before he he comes onto you. Mm -hmm. Sounds weird, but you know. Right. <laughs> 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 My answer is going to be very similar to Helen's, which is just I would talk to him about it. Um, and going off of Mel's point, I think everyone's timeline is different mm -hmm. for how long it takes them to get over someone. And also it is very unique to the relationship that he was in. Uh, time, you know, three years isn't necessarily a marker of the seriousness of the relationship or whatever, because you don't know if maybe they were already winding down the last mm -hmm. year or something, true, right? True. Um, but still, I think to Helen's point, oftentimes someone might say, no, I'm fine. and. They might think they are, but they may not be emotionally ready to. So I would step one, talk to him, and then step two, even with your answer, to be kind of careful and observant and just always communicating with him along the way. Wish you so much luck. And that wraps today's episode of Dear ABG. Thank you so, so much for joining us today. If you have a question or anything you'd like advice on, you can contact us. The link is below in the description box. And if you haven't listened to our most recent podcast episode, you can do so on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, all the podcasting platforms. We are a podcast called ABG Asian Boss Girl. And we'll catch you all on the next episode of Dear ABG. Bye! Bye. Oh shit, I didn't wear deodorant. I have... Okay, I'm like... Oh fuck, yeah. <laughs> I'm like sweating from that. Yeah, that was yeah, I think I should have said Whoa, 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 whoa. And that wraps today's episode of Dear ABG. Thank you so much for joining us today. And if you like how. Damn it! And that wraps today's episode of Dear ABG. Thank you so much for joining in, tuning in with us today. Same fucking shit. <laughs>